Well, well, uh, Deep subject. huh? Deep subject. Uh, I'm just gonna do this the whole video. Uh, uh, is this annoying you guys? Uh, Week nine. So um, one assignment left, search engine optimization for your sites. And uh, the Creative Flex Slider Gallery is not an official assignment in this class. I will lecture on it, how to go about doing that. Uh, I would um, love it if you guys could try doing it, but it's not an official assignment in this class. It should be, right? I'll, I'll write it up one of these days, Aaron. I, I really will. Probably not this quarter. Or maybe I will. But I probably shouldn't if it's not already, you know, because students generally don't like, and they're right about a teacher adding on an assignment last minute that they didn't really know about, right? But uh, today we are going to talk search engine optimization in WordPress without using a plugin. So these next two lectures um, sit on my business site, okay? Um, so they're not in my school site. This article right here, um, I wrote for this class. I also wrote it for my uh, writing for the web class. Is anybody gonna be taking writing for the web over the summer? Anybody? Okay. So we will use uh, the techniques um, in this article in terms of writing, right? Belly, you already took that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when it comes to like the uh, meta descriptions, right, and that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, so search engine optimization in general. What is search engine optimization? Well. If someone types in something like, so uh, let's say it like this. If you were, let's say, a restaurant or um, a yoga instructor or chiropractor or uh, a who'sy what's it business person in Seattle and you needed a logo designer, what would you type into the Google machine to find a logo designer in Seattle? Yoga designer Seattle. Yelp, Thumbtack, me. When's the last time I did a logo in Seattle for money? Five years ago. Probably more. Uh, the last logo I did was, you, kind of, you see it out in the hallway, the IT services logo, which is not in my portfolio because, um, well, look at it, <laughs> right? Um, so if I haven't designed a logo in Seattle in God knows how long, why am I first after companies like Yelp and Thumbtack. Search engine optimization, right? And here's how I've done it. Using methodologies from this article. So this article says without a plugin, Okay, so what is SEO? How does it work? Well, I'll teach you more about it in, um, in the writing for the web class. But basically, if we look at my services page for search engine optimization, search engine optimization comes down to 
two principles, keyword selection, keyword placement, right? In other words, if somebody is searching for logo design Seattle, right? Let's uh, take a look at his, well, he at least changed it. Uh, you've heard me talk about David Lemley in the past, right? Some of you guys have. In the type class, I talked about David Lemley a little bit. Um, he is probably one of the best logo designers around and is a brand strategist. So why doesn't he beat me in terms of logo design Seattle? I was waiting for uh, Benjamin over there to say SEO. Does he even have a meta description tag in here? He does not. Well, that's one reason. And take a look at his title tag. Brand strategy, package design, retail voodoo. Why doesn't it say Seattle? Why doesn't it say logo design? Right? Versus if we look at, here's the real reason why I rule the interwebs on logo design Seattle is because I go to every computer around campus, type in logo design Seattle, and then do this. That's the real magic behind it. That's a straight, straight up lie. I don't do that. But that'd be funny if I did. Make us do it. <laughs> I make you guys do it. So in my title tag, the words logo, design, and Seattle are prominently there. In my meta description, premium design works as a small design. Now, I don't need to say design. If you say it once, it's there. But this is what I call human readable text or human readable and machine readable text, okay? Where do you guys know the term HCI, human computer interaction, right? So it's where human and computers collide, right? I'm a human, I'm using a computer to perform tasks. This computer is tracking us as humans to retrieve data and present to us for our tasks, okay? So as a human, I want to read a meta description that is human readable, it makes sense. As a machine, Google needs to read and track a meta description that has all the keywords in it, like logo, design, Seattle. Title tag, logo, design, Seattle, okay? Those of you at home that are having trouble reading this at home, logo, design, Seattle, meta description, logo, design, Seattle. So the two things that I use generally for search engine optimization is a well-structured title tag and a well-written keyword dense meta description, okay? So this meta description then is that reusable chunk of information that we have talked about in the past, meaning responsive website grid. Again, how general of a search is that? Responsive website grid. Right? That's not too specific. In other words, I'm not saying responsive website grid by Premium Design Works in Seattle. I'm on page one. Okay? 
for this tutorial I wrote. And again, I just go to computer after computer, search for things, and then click on it, and that seems to work, right? Or you put it in your lectures and read it. Yeah, totally, right? But because I have, right, so again, search engine optimization. Car alarms need to die. They really, really do. Keyword selection, keyword placement, right? So in terms of responsive website grid, people might be searching for other things like 960 grid responsive. I'm up a little higher, right? Jesus Christ, that car alarm is going to get on my every last. Anybody ever see Dane Cook's thing on car alarms? Biscuit? Yeah, it's pretty good. So what I've then done is for this headline right here, I've used uh, words like convert, 960, grid, website, layout, responsive, design. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven very specific keywords placed in the headline of the article, right? Then for the title tag, that headline has been duplicated, right? So what if somebody is also saying, responsive website grid tutorial, right? I'm even a little higher because I managed to get the word tutorial into that title. Tutorials is the category that this blog is filed under, right? Let's see for this one, Branding Services Seattle. I'm probably not very high for this one. Finney Bischoff is definitely one. But again, middle of page two for branding. How much branding have I really done in Seattle? I'm gonna brand the hell out of that car if it doesn't shut up. For those of you at home, if you can't hear, this is now the second time this car alarm has gone off. But again, I have put branding services Seattle. So if we go to this page, because again, my gig really is to just search for stuff and click on it. Branding services Seattle. Okay. The title of the page, or the, the name of the page, is Graphic Design and Branding underneath the services section of Premium Design Works. So branding is on is the title of the name of the page. Services is the name of the gateway page section, and Seattle is the location. So what I've done is I've then compiled keywords from three different places to then dynamically generate a title tag, okay? Now, going back to this lecture. Keywords and keyword phrases should be placed in the following places within your website text, titles and meta descriptions. 
first and foremost, okay? There's the search engine optimization starter guide right here. By Google. that talks about creating unique, accurate page titles, right? So this is a unique, accurate page title that is also, I don't wanna say fluffed out a bit, but covers a wide range of territory so that people searching for multiple different searches may end up on this page. So don't think about in terms of, I've had, I've seen those commercials like web.com, we'll get you found. Hey, guess what? Nobody is looking for you. I hate to burst your bubble, but when's the last time you typed into a search engine premium design works? Nobody's looking for you. Nobody's looking for me. What they're looking for are answers to their questions. So if they type a question into the Google machine, right? and an answer comes back in the form of an article that is useful to them, they may then spend time on that article and they may bookmark it and or link to it, okay? Going back to the, let's close some of these graphic view. Meta, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Meta. It's Rick Teal. So make use of the description meta tag as well. How many of you have already used the description meta tag? Who, anybody know what it is? Okay, so again, it is the meta tag, name, description, okay? So this right here is what shows up then in a search engine result, if it's there. If you don't have a meta description, it'll look for body text. But if we look at the prioritization list, Meta descriptions is prioritized over top of body tag or body copy, okay? So anchor text, alt values for images and domain and page file URLs also count, right? But mainly titles and meta descriptions. So why wouldn't you wanna use one of those plugins? How many of you have seen like the all-in-one plugins, all-in-one SEO plugin by Yoast or some of those other ones, okay? Why should you not use it? Because Mike said so. And here's what Mike means. This plugin will give you two fields, one for the title and one for the meta description. This is useless. Because you can put together a title tag via the parts of the website that you're pulling together. This meta description, what, where might we get a meta description from? We've already talked about it. What field? I'm going to the field but I'm saying if you guys can guess while I'm getting there. Who can tell me what field? You can use the first sentence, but the first sentence is not always the keyword dense meta description. So instead, what field have, did we use the other day? 
you could use custom fields, but there's one already there for you. We used it when we were putting together our blog feed page. The excerpt field. Ella, you're not so bad at the at the guess what's in Mike's head game. <laughs> you're a pretty willing participant. That's nice. I like it. Okay. So yeah, the excerpt field, right? So this is where then if I write the name or title of this page with keywords in it, and I use the excerpt field, convert, 960, grid, website, layout, responsive, design, CSS, JavaScript, content, navigation, mobile, devices, packed with keywords that somebody might use. Human readable, because if you read, to convert your Pixel Perfect 960 grid website layout to a responsive design, you just need to write a little more CSS and use a bit of JavaScript to make your content and navigation display correctly for mobile devices. That might be a long sentence. But overall, when I said that, it was a human readable, hearable sentence. It's also a machine readable sentence, where it has, it has lots of keywords, but it's not keyword stuffing, okay? So, does anybody remember the days where people would put white keywords down at the bottom of the page over a white background? Google said, you're blacklisted. That's keyword stuffing. Number one rule of the Google machine, do not fuck with the Google machine. Rule number two about the Google machine, you get where I'm going with that, okay? So instead, play nice with the Google machine, right? So if again, we, let's just go back to the nine sixty nine sixty responsive, grid responsive, tutorial. Ooh, web design tutorial. Somebody put that in before. Okay. So this is a real live search that came up in Google machine. So 960 grid responsive web design tutorial. 960 grid web responsive design tutorial. I should have put tutorial in the meta description. Right? But in terms of then a search engine result, don't put the business name first. Again, nobody's looking for your business name. Put the name of the content, the title of the content first, right? So in terms of the title tag, there are three different formulas. Well, there's one main formula, three different scenarios of that formula. If we're on a regular page, the page name, the parent category name, the business name, city state, logos, portfolio, premium design work, Seattle. Branding services, premium design work, Seattle, so on and so forth. So the category. In this context, what's the, the definition of that? And the, and the postings category. Right. In pages, this is where then services is the category here, the gateway page. Okay. Right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So search engine optimization is a service versus a portfolio piece versus a blog article. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm talking about. Good question. In terms of a blog article, the categories would be case studies, articles, or tutorials. Now, in this, I need to rewrite a little bit of this because I didn't put, for a while, for the blog postings, I didn't put the category name in here because what if the blog posting had multiple categories? 
which one would it pick? Well, I've made a point to only give my blog article, my blog postings, a single category now, so that, right, tutorials, right? So something like this then, tutorials, and I can get that keyword into my title tag, okay? Then there's the site's front page, where you want to use your tagline, business name, city, state. So your tagline, mine, logo design, print design, web design, and development. That's not really a catchy tagline. In other words, I'm not saying uh, the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. Anybody? Anybody know that reference? Bret Hart, wrestling. It all, is, it all goes back to wrestling, Sherrod. Instead, mine are, what services do I provide? Let's get that into the title. That's my tagline, okay? So how do we go about this then? Well, currently, we have In our title tag, said blog info description, blog info name. Okay? Blog info description is the field that returns the tagline. So this is the tagline, just another WordPress site, and then this is the site title. So currently, just another WordPress site, spring 2017 demo, right? That's not a very search engine optimized title at all, okay? So, what we need to do is write a more functional title tag. And this is what we were discussing earlier in my office, Aaron. I'm sorry, we can't keep it a secret any longer, what we were talking about. We can share? Okay. I mean, I wrote this for you. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But given where you are in the website, whether you're on the front page or in a regular page or a single posting, you want to return different pieces of information for the first portion of your title tag, right? So again, if we go back to this, tagline, for the front page, the posting name for single postings or whatever, the page name for pages, okay? 
So here's what we're going to do. We're going to kill a couple of birds with, I don't know, a few different stones. Uh, that, that metaphor just failed. Get over it, man. I'm not perfect. That says so. Yes. Yes. It's just how life expects me to be perfect. The universe expects me to be perfect. It's a lot of weight on my shoulders. Right. So the first thing that we want to do is remove then this from here. And this is where we're going to show you now. And Mike's title tag. Well, if I now I've posted this to my website, what's going to happen? The donut is going to spin while it's not responding. To start out with it's going to return and saying function not found or it's just not going to do anything because it should say undefined function or maybe not let's see just, am I getting a fatal error? Yeah. So what I need to do is this where this is where if I want to use this function that I wrote myself, right? I need to then go and create that function in my functions file. So now my title should be such, right? Uh, does it smell like up dog in here to you? <laughs> okay. Anybody know that joke? Come on. You know that joke? Say what's up dog. Not much. What's up with you? You guys suck as, at these jokes with me sometimes. Okay. So this is where then I want to start. What? I believe I just told you. Thanks, Aaron. Catch one of my errors. Why do I go home and put two Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Aaron. No, there should not have been two. That was an accident. Okay, so back to this. So basically, then. What I want to do is start a formula, right? And again, if the formula is tagline, here it 
parent page. Business name. Location. Right? For now, business name location is going to be consistent. Okay? So, but if I type this out like this now, save, and go refresh on the home page, tagline, parent page, business name, location, right? Well, if I'm on a regular page, I want this to say page. So how do I get it to say tagline on the front page and the page name on a regular page? So that's starting to make sense to you? So this is where, again, we are going to start to explore, like we have in the past, See if I can just WordPress page conditionals. Step one, conditional tags. There we go. I think this is what I'm looking for. Yes. So, whoops. If we're on the front page, we want to use the conditional front page. If is front page and again, we're in the functions file. So in the functions file, you don't want to use escapement, meaning you don't want to close out a script and open up another script later on. You just want to have the functions file be one continuous PHP file, right? So that's where I start to use echo, okay? So if is front page, echo tagline, else, Other. So we're on the home page, so tagline. If I go back to the site, right? And I go to portfolio and view page source. This is how I do it in my separator with spaces on each side of it. Right? So if is front page, echo tagline, else 
echo other. So this is where we are on a page, other, parent page if there is one, okay? So if we then want to get the tagline, All right? Remember how we got the tagline? Blog info description. That's right. I have to go back to the home page. Just another WordPress site. Keyword dense tagline goes here. Oh. Keyword dense tagline goes here. Okay. So now, if we want to then say, If. is page We don't have to use an echo statement here for the title. We didn't even have to use an echo statement for blog info description. Again, sometimes you have to use an echo statement, sometimes you don't. Okay. I can say, is page what do the two pipes mean or or is single so if i'm on a page or a single posting get the title Totally just close that. Damn it. Um, WordPress condition conditional. Let's close some things. Got a lot of D source open. So if his front page is home is the um, the blog feed page, okay? So I could say if his front page or
is home for the blog feed page get the description if his page or a single get the title All right so we go back here is single as a single post. We can also pass arguments of the number or the name or an array of them. A page, then, we can do the same thing, an argument of a number, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if I go to the about page, about parent page, business name, location, okay? If I'm on a latest posting, latest posting, parent page, business name, location. But I don't want this parent page to show up unless I'm on a parent page, right? As well, I want the blog info description. So I said if, else if. I also want to make sure I put in an else that if we're in some other part of the site like uh, the not found or the search portion of the site, oops, we would also want to at here so if front or blog feed page or posting other like, let's just say, 404 or search, et cetera, okay? So we want to then write a conditional right here. So we have if, else if, else, okay? You guys know that you can do this, if, else if, else? You guys know that? Okay. If page post parents, right? Double check that I got that right. Yeah, if post post part. Right. I could have put the separator here and just have one. Let's do that. Let's do it like I've got written in here. And here it should be the title, host, post, 
both parent get the title echo get the title that's right because I don't think this will take that argument here echo get again this is where those two functions basically do the same thing except let's look this up the title So let's kind of compare the two functions side by side. Yeah, the title accepts before parameters of before, after, and echo, right? So tags before and after, where get the title accepts the post variable as an argument. So essentially, I could have here said echo get the title for post ID, right? See if that works. Yeah, so this doesn't have a parent, so about business name location. If we went to the portfolio and we went to logos, right? View page source, logos, business name. Look at that. Where's the parent? What did I do? How did I screw it up? If page post parent get the title post post parent if post post parent get the title post post parent Ah, not page post parent. Post post parent. Two today on you know. Are you keep track? Two mistakes? No. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Come on. God. I'm on edge the way it is, man. That 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 thing is gonna push me over the edge. You want to see a grown man snap? Oh, that's right, because I had to refresh this. Let's see. Logos. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where's my mistake, guys?
über zehn ist. And what are the YouTube later? Um, logos, portfolio, I don't know what's going on. Let's go back to this, the title. Maybe I've got some kind of a... Uh, It's possibly I misspelled something or something. Logos, business name, print. You are under portfolio, right? If goes there, else if, else, you are outside of that statement, if, oh, What? I don't know what I'm. I'm not seeing my error. So it's bothering me. Um, maybe there's something. Let me get rid of this statement right there. Inside there, so maybe I need to say if it's a page, uh, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Ah, that's what it is. Uh, don't forget this. That's what it is. If, Jesus Christ, man. 
I always forget this thing. In terms of, you guys know what variable scope is? Okay. Because I am attempting to use the post variable and I have not defined the post variable in this function, it's saying, what's the post variable? So how do we get it to look outside of the function for the post variable? See, I do the same thing. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I don't have a teacher to ask. And it's usually something stupid, right? Something totally stupid. Now, if it doesn't work, I am going to self-destruct. Put a shiver. Bets, bets, bets. I just forgot that damn thing. Yeah. Uh, so you saw just what happened. Right. Okay. Anyhow, um, so now I should have, like I said, uh, a title tag that if I'm on the front, it gets the description. If I'm on a page or a posting, let's go in here then. Let's try going back to the echo, uh, get the title post ID, meaning whatever post you're on. Refresh. Yeah, it still is working. And um, I'm not going to do it here, but um, this is also where I did do the category a while ago. Um, and for my business site, then, do I really not have a closing PHP tag here? Oh, my God. Um, for my business site, then, I put in the category thing just a little while ago. And so if you look at my functions page, This is where I said, if is front page, retrieve the site tagline. Else if is page, get the title. Inside this one, I said, if it has a post parent, get the title of the post parent. Notice I did not forget that. Then I said, else if category. Echo, get the category. And this is where the um, get the category function is a little stupid and you have to then use the index of zero that gets the cat name. In other words, you get the category will return an array of objects. So where is the array of objects? I don't know where it is, but 
what I do know is that the category name was the first in, or the zero in the array. So this still confuses me just a touch, but that's how I did the title, get the category name for single posting. So I modified mine a little bit after I did that, um, that title tag. So that's the title tag. Hooray! Now let's talk about the excerpt. So basically then, again, if we look at... Meta description, so this points to SEO Moz, right? Your meta description will show up here in your search engine result, okay? So we need to use the meta tag with two attributes, name, description, and then content that we populate. So it's only got the viewport right there. Now we have a description, content goes here. So we want to get then the excerpt field right there. And this is where I was talking about a while ago that if we use like we did in, um, Our loop, if we use the excerpt function, this is where it's going to get the excerpt, but it's also going to wrap paragraph tags around it. And we're on a page right now, again, currently. If we look at pages, this is really stupid. Pages by nature don't have excerpt fields. Why? There's no good reason. They should. So, sorry, Adam. I didn't mean to yell. I mean, I meant to yell, but I didn't mean to scare you. Ron, Ron okay. would make the statement, this, this was a posting, a blog-based product. Yeah, product. yeah. Yeah, Ron would say that. Yeah. Oh, it's because it's a blogging thing. Yeah. yeah. yeah I Ron, I hope you're feeling better because you're sick today. But, um, yeah. So, he's right. And this is where then what we need to do is add theme support for excerpts. Okay. Ooh. Right. So in then, um, you know, it's just one of those quirky things. Add post type support where we 
allow support for the excerpt field on pages. So if we go to, ooh, look at that, I misspelled it. So add post type support for whatever post type, in this case a page, and support excerpts. So post type, whatever post type it is, right? So if it's a custom post type, you would put in whatever custom post type. And you can add support for title, editor, author, thumbnail, excerpts, trackbacks, et cetera, et cetera. I just don't understand why this isn't out of the box default WordPress. You would think that the makers of WordPress would be watching my tutorial videos and think to themselves, hey, that's some cool guy, he's got a good idea. Why don't we do that? Huh? Yeah. Bastards. So now that we've done that, and I turn it on, right? I go up under screen options. Need to save it. Excerpt. So now, a new page, new page source. It grabs that excerpt, but it puts a P tag in there. And that's not what I want. Instead, what I want is no P tag. So this is where we can use the get the excerpt function, and we need to use an echo statement, or an echo, or whatever the thing, what, what did we call them when we structure some or other echo? What, what is a, it's not a function, it's a, what was it? Language construct, that's what it is. Okay. So if we use echo, get the excerpt, right? Now it should get rid of those P tags for us. If I save it. Okay. 
So now, wherever we are in our sites, we should then write a keyword dense human readable, machine readable excerpt, right? And we'll do that in, in other words, in the Web 160 class, what I have, what I have people do is I'll make you guys do a keyword study and integrate those keywords into your meta descriptions and into your written content. Okay, so we'll talk about that down the road. But that's basically the gist of those two things, right? Is basically how I've dominated the search engine world. It's really that simple, okay? From there, you know, as well, and we don't need to do it today, but if you look through this, right, so it's going to compile the tagline or the, the uh, title tag from the different parts, right, of your WordPress site. So here's the excerpt, right? Um, alt values for images. You should put an alt text value for your images. That's keyword dense, right? But that's basically how I went from page 36 to page one to actually the number one slot after Yelp and Thumbtack for Logo Design Seattle. Well, that and how many of you have ever uh, linked to either my business site or my school site from one of your websites? Any of you? Thanks, Ellie. No, no, no. That's actually linking to yours. If you leave a comment on my site to your domain, what you're doing is then a well-respected website, high-ranking website like mine is pointing to yours, which you're getting an SEO bump from me. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. See how I don't expect anything in return when I actually do expect things in return from you guys and you guys don't give me anything in return, you're welcome. So, but if you link to me, that's a link coming into my website, right? Which that also helps the Google rankings. Yeah. Would, would you repeat that? So if you have a link on your website to one of my articles, to one of my pages, right. you are giving me an SEO bump. Okay. If you leave a comment on my website pointing to Sylvia Shiro, that's how I pronounce it, right? Dot com, you're getting an SEO bump from me. So here's here's what I'm saying. Sylvia. This right here that then goes to your website, you're welcome. See the things I do for you guys? Yeah. My whole life is about doing stuff for other people. But you're only getting a bump too for these keywords, the keywords of your name. Now, if I had linked to your website using web design and linked to yours, you would get a kick, you'd get a bump for those keywords of web design pointing to yours. Right. So, for instance, if we go to one of the articles that um, was featured on some websites a while back, 
my creating a website wireframe and illustrator tutorial. What I did, I have trackbacks turned on. So 13 fantastic illustrator web design tutorials, Canvas theme. Let's see if that one still is up and running. Nope. Our websites have gone down, but um, page source on SEC, right? So this person right here has basically, with the keywords, creating a website wireframe and illustrator and linking to my article here, this person has given me a bump for those keywords. Does that make sense? That's the popularity component to SEO. But to get the popularity component, you have to engineer your site the way we just did. Right? Um, so yeah, basically, like I said, doing it this way is, to me, uh, incredibly powerful. And I don't say that just because I wrote this. But I do say it just because I wrote it. You wrote it because I wrote it because. Well, let's say it like this: I wrote it to combat the plugin thing, right? But I started. I never looked into using the plugins because I looked to see if I can hard code a solution first after I use some plugins with some results. And I found out that, oh, I could just hard code that. So I try to hard code things instead of using plugins because plugins are bloated and have, you know, you need about 3% of what they do. Okay. Now, that being said, there is a plugin that I do use for search engine optimization. So the one plugin you do want to use not to write your title tags and whatnot. Is this Google XML sitemaps? plugin, which will create an XML sitemap, which will help Google and the other search engines to better index your blog. Okay, So I got this theory right here from this book right here that taught me some search engine functional stuff. You can find that underneath my Web 160 website. I should link to this in my other article too, you know, but I learned about search engine optimization by this book, Search Engine Visibility, that we use in Web 160. That's where I learned the basics, and this one helped me to understand a little more of the engineering behind it. And then, like I said, I put those into practice where I wrote this type of function and meta description and bang, I just shot up. So, all right. Um, yeah, I know it's a blogging platform, Ron, thanks. 